World of Dentistry. Dental solutions for your dental needs. Hey folks, welcome back to our channel. Today we've got a pretty unusual but super intriguing topic, ranulas. Yeah, I know, it sounds like Dracula's less scary cousin, but trust me, it's something you'll want to learn about. Especially if you've got this odd lump under your tongue and you're freaking out. But before we dive into it, make sure to like this video, subscribe, and ring that bell so you never miss out on our weekly content. All right, let's get to it. So what in the world is a ranula? No, it's not a new dance craze. It's actually a medical condition. It's a mucus-filled lump, mostly found on the floor of your mouth, right under your tongue. Today, we're going to unwrap everything there is to know about it, the causes, symptoms, diagnosis, and even treatment options. So stick around. Let's talk basics. A ranula looks like a squishy blue blob under your tongue. Think of it as a water balloon, but not the kind you want to toss around at a BBQ. In medical terms, it's a pseudocyst, meaning it's a fluid-filled lump. Unlike true cysts, these don't have a special lining called epithelium, making them a bit unique. Now don't let this blob scare you. It's generally painless, but can get large enough to interfere with your speech, eating, and even breathing. Trust me. Nobody wants to feel like they're talking or eating with a marble in their mouth. So what creates this mouth-watering, well, not literally, condition? Here's a quick rundown on the most common causes. Trauma to the salivary duct, most common. Obstruction from stones or mucus plugs. Chronic inflammatory conditions like Sjogren's syndrome, HIV infections affecting the salivary ducts. And here's a curveball for ya. Sometimes ranulas just pop up out of nowhere leaving doctors scratching their heads. That's right. Not all ranulas have an identifiable cause, making them the enigmas of the oral world. Ready for some categorization? We've got two main types, oral and plunging or cervical ranulas. The oral type usually stems from some injury to your salivary glands. Remember, it's not always the case. Sometimes they just appear. Now, plunging ranulas take it a notch further. They go deep, quite literally penetrating through tissues and even plunging down your neck. These show up as lumps in the neck area and often don't present any oral symptoms. So, yeah, the ranula family is pretty diverse. If you're thinking, hey, I've heard of something similar, it's called a mucosel, then give yourself a pat on the back. A mucoselle is like a ranula's cousin. Both are fluid-filled lumps, but a mucosel usually pops up on your lip or somewhere else in your mouth. However, ranulas are like the big brothers in the family. They're typically larger and can cause more issues like difficulties in speaking or eating. So, while they may look similar, don't mistake a ranula for a mere mocosele. How common is a ranula? Let's talk numbers. Only about 2 in 10,000 people are likely to develop a ranula. That's a rarity, folks. And guess what? They're usually more common among younger individuals. So, if you're thinking you're too young to have health issues, well, here's a curveball your way. You may be the chosen one for a ranula, so it never hurts to keep an eye on any odd bumps. When it comes to symptoms, let's break it down by type. Oral ranula symptoms, non-painful swelling under the tongue, can cause difficulties in speaking, eating, or breathing. Cervical ranula symptoms, generally shows up as a soft, painless lump in the neck area. Pretty straightforward, huh? But remember, these blobs can sometimes reduce your saliva flow, making it uncomfortable to chew or swallow. And who wants that when you're trying to enjoy a juicy burger? Big question. Are ranulas like tiny ticking time bombs? Nope, they're generally benign and not life-threatening. However, complications can arise like infections or ruptures. And let's not forget, if they grow too large, you might find it hard to speak, eat, or even breathe. So while they're usually not a big deal, it's still crucial to get them looked at and properly managed. Diagnosing a ranula usually involves an in-depth examination by a healthcare specialist. They might even poke and prod to check the consistency of the lump. Don't worry, it's all for a good cause. Some cases may require further testing like ultrasound or even a CT scan to get a better view. These tests aren't routine but can help rule out other issues that might masquerade as a ranula. So, yes, sometimes your ranula might get a mini photo shoot. All right, down to business. How do you evict this unwanted tenant? Treatment options can vary depending on the size and cause. Here's the menu. Surgical removal, marsupialization, laser therapy. 
Whatever the treatment path, it's essential to follow the advice of your healthcare provider. Remember, while YouTube is great for DIY crafts, it's not the place for DIY medical procedures. And there we have it, folks. A complete rundown on ranulas. They might be rare, but knowing is half the battle. If you found this video helpful or know someone who could benefit from this info, don't forget to share. And remember, if you spot a ranula or anything else unusual, don't hesitate to seek medical advice. Thank you for watching, and as always, stay happy, stay healthy, and keep smiling. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. See you next time.